The Reform Gamers is brought to you 100% independent and ad-free thanks to our dear patrons over on patreon.com slash Gamers to get yourself sweet, sweet perks such as uncut early access to the episodes, special episodes of the podcast, and more. Head on over to patreon.com slash Gamers and consider lending support and joining the herd. Without further ado, let's hop into the show. Hello and welcome, dear listeners, to episode 181 of the Reform Gamers, the show all about theology, video games, and web slinging all around New York City. I'm your host, Logan. I am his co-host, Adam. Adam, Adam, Adam. It is the most wonderful time mm. of the year, as the famous song goes to say, man. It's it's funny because when all this COVID stuff started happening, I'm like, all these games are getting delayed. There's going to be nothing to play by the time the fall comes around. And now here we are, and we're like, there are too many things to play. <laughs> like, Ain't enough time in the day, man. Can't get a I can't get around. Become an official full time streamer and just play video games my whole life. That's that's the dream, man. Even if I wanted to do that, my wife would be like, no. (laughs) Like even if I think like like, even if she was like, all right, this could support us as family, she'd probably still be like, no. (laughs) She's she doesn't hate playing video like video gaming, but I'm just like, I don't know if she'd be down with that being my career. I don't think we would set up the good the proper boundaries. Like you got to be able to say, "Hey, I'm going in this room, and I'm mm-hmm. gaming for five hours," and she'd be like, "That's not happening," because I would not hear to- I would hear a kid crying, and I'd feel like I'd have to go help. Now, so you got to change up and be like, "I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna work for five hours, sure, and then sure. Uh, and we're gonna make some money, and then after that, I'm gonna work another eight hours editing videos." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. That's the, that's the part I wouldn't like. Oh man. Oh man. It's a funny thing. I love it when people, because people will sometimes reach out to me and ask, you know, Hey, what do I need to start a podcast or Twitch stream or whatever? Like, well, here's what you need to know. It's a lot more work than you think it is. <laughs> they're like, what? It's like, yeah, dude, here's everything you got to do on the back end. And they're like, wow, yeah. I did. I if didn't you want to do that. it well, if you want to do it well. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to kind of make something of it, if you want to just do it as a hobby, then you don't really need to worry about the other stuff. Yeah. But if you want to make something of it, kind of like what we've done over the last six years or so, then there's a lot of work into it uh, that goes into it. But it is what it is. It's fun, mm-hmm. though. You got to enjoy doing it. That's the thing. That's why yeah. we keep coming back to y'all. That's why we're skipping out on the Game Awards right now, recording this episode, getting it out to you, dear listeners, because we love you guys. And plus, we just have Twitter pulled up to the side here, and we're just watching the Man, updates. I, I tell you, it's... If I didn't love coming and just talking video games with you, man, I don't. I would have quit a long time ago. And that's, that's I mean, you do so much more work than me. Like, this is like the main thing I do. I, I help prep the shows, come up with topic ideas, you know, interact with some of the dear listeners. But you go so much harder and so much more. Like, I just show up and do the podcast, and I'm still like, man, this can sometimes be a lot on family stuff and stepping away. But I just, I'm like, but then I'm like, I just like coming on and talking about video games. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so yeah, that is definitely the thing. I just like coming and hanging out and talking video games. And so I'm thankful that you allow this, again, my small part that I get to play in it because there's a lot more that I could be doing and probably should be doing. But I'm just glad I get to come and talk video games with you every other yeah, week. Man. It's just a good time, you know. It's like uh, it just goes back to the whole idea of community, right? We we as Christians, we need that community. We need we need that time to just kind of hang out and uh, just meet together, and that's what we do uh, mm-hmm. every other week. And so it's pretty cool that we're able to do that, and you guys are here listening, and uh, we just get to kind of keep it keep it rolling. So again, uh, I guess we'll just roll it into this. You know, we appreciate you, dear listeners. Thank you so much for your support this year. Uh, in case you didn't know, this is going to be our only episode that we put out this month. So in case we don't see you, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh, hopefully you guys have a good times with family, friends, and uh, and just play some good games. And so kind of what we'll do this episode, uh, in case you hadn't noticed already, we're going to be talking about Spider-Man Miles Morales. This is going to be our spoiler cast, so to speak, just to let you know in case you're new, kind of what we do on these episodes is we talk about the game up to a certain point. 
give you plenty plenty of spoiler warnings so that way if you haven't played the game and you don't want any bit of it spoiled or the story or whatever that's your opportunity to duck out but until then you are safe from spoilers listening to this episode uh, but yeah, so we're going to get into that a little bit later on. And like I said, uh, this is the only episode we're going to put out this month. So stay tuned to things like YouTube, uh, the website, those kind of places where you can get extra content from us. That'll be going up over uh, the next few weeks, actually. And so with that being said, let's get into some housekeeping. Now, like I said, I already covered the new content stuff. Stay tuned to the website, uh, the YouTube, <laughs> the YouTube, the YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be putting stuff up over there. We're going to have a video going up here. It should be the same day that this episode releases to public feeds. We're going to have a video up talking about can Christians play Dark Souls, which apparently every time I check our website analytics, that's the one, like the thing that is most searched that brings people to our website and what people are typing in the search bar in our website. So it's, I'm going to make a video about it and put that out there for you guys and gals, and then hopefully you guys can enjoy uh, dark souls. Uh, <laughs> if you, if the spirit lets you, I mean, if it doesn't, then, then don't worry about it. Play, uh, I don't know. I almost said play demon souls, but that's the same genre. So I am uh, sack boy adventures. There you go. Sack wholesome, boy. wholesome I, content. You know, what's funny. I've heard that that game is actually really I know, stinking. Good. I know I've been so tempted. That was one of my, uh, I've, I've kept an eye out. I'm like, I do not need this game right now. Adam buy it mm-hmm. when it's $30 in a year. You do yeah. not need to buy it right now, but it, I've heard it's so good. Yep. Ugh. See, I was unlike you. I didn't listen and I bought it. So I haven't played it yet, but I need to. <laughs> so I, uh, I heard it was games. good. So it is what it is, man. It's that most wonderful time of the year. But speaking of most wonderful things, dear listeners, in case you are not in our Discord server, what are you doing? Get over there, group up with people, find a new fire team in Destiny 2. Or if you want to play Stellaris with some bros, you can do that over there. Uh, we have a good LFG section over there. So hop on over to the Discord server. The link is in your show notes. Quick reminder that I do stream on Twitch every Friday morning from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So come on over, hang out at twitch.tv slash the theologian. We'll love to have you over there. Basically, we cover just a quick little devotional, a quick little topic of discussion that uh, I feel the spirit leading me to talk about throughout the week. And so we cover that and then we play a game afterwards. It's probably going to start focusing more on destiny too on my streams because I just, I just like destiny too. It's just really good. But if you like what we do here at uh, the reform gamers, you can support us financially over at patreoncom slash the reform gamers. You can support the show uh, with pledges as low as a dollar a month that go a long way in keeping the show going, but it also gets you some sweet perks like early uncut access to all of the episodes. So if you think me mumbling and fumbling through words is hard in the polished version, just wait until you listen to the uncut version. But you also get a uh, behind the scenes episode once a month as well that just went out here recently for $5 and up patrons. So be sure to check that out, check that out over on Patreon. Dot com. You can also support the show uh, another way. If you don't want to do the Patreon subscription thing, you can go to um, our merch shop. Link will be in your show notes and buy some sweet merch. So if you want to get that sweet dear listener on a hoodie, on a long sleeve, on a long sleeve hoodie thing that Adam really likes, hey, you can get dope. that. Hey, I and forget. we're three sales away from – we're at 47 sales. We need to get to 50 yeah. By our next episode. I mean, I'd love us to like get to like 75 by the new year. But hey, we get we can all have dreams, we can have goals. But hey, get us over 50. So if you haven't got something yet, go over and get some sweet merch. Yep. Yep. Christmas is coming up too. You gotta you gotta show your pastor some love. So it should be there before Christmas if you buy it in the next day or two. There you go. So patrons, there you go. (laughs) Public feed listeners, uh, maybe not. But still go ahead and head on over there, get yourself some sweet merch. And enjoy it. And if you have a special lady in your life, guys, I'm just letting you know, uh, the women's fit sweater uh, gets my wife's seal of approval. So be sure to pick up one of those as well. And if you're listening to the podcast, take a screenshot of you uh, listening to the podcast from your app or take a picture of yourself listening to it. Tag us on social media and uh, let us know that you're listening to the show and what you think of whatever section you're listening to. Like maybe, I don't know. Logan has bogus opinions on Destiny 2. I don't know, whatever. Just have fun with it. But with that being said, let's get into the show. And we like to start off the show like we always do with a little bit of what have we been playing. Adam, handsome bearded man, bearded wonder. What have you been playing? 
Man, this, I, I don't know if I've ever been bouncing around as much in games as I have right now. <laughs> like, I've got games on Switch, PlayStation, I've got it with the Xbox now. I got Apple Arcade for three months. Uh, so I've been, uh, there's like, I got three games on there. I'm like, okay, I got it for three months. I'd like to finish these three games to be like, okay, I didn't just waste this membership. So the first one I played was when we were on vacation over Thanksgiving. I played The Last Campfire, um, which is a little puzzle game about a, um, it's called an ember. And so it's kind of this like heartfelt story of trying to guide others and community and doing things with, you know, helping each other out. Really cute little game, fun puzzles. Um, a couple of times I kind of got turned around and needed just a little bit of direction, but played that on Apple Arcade and had a really good time. A couple other games that I wanted to play, they've got, um, what is it, The Pathless? Is that the one that's on PlayStation 5 also? Uh, I think so, yeah. That Micah really likes. That's on there, and then Sayonara Wild Hearts. That's kind of mm. my two games I'd like to finish in the next couple of months on there. But yeah, I played the last campfire and enjoyed it. It was just, it was a game I could play when I was hanging out. Even if I was hanging out with, like with Hannah and my in-laws, it didn't require a ton of my attention. So it was a good time there. Um, I've been playing, you know, finished up Miles Morales and we'll be talking about that later in the episode. So I won't go into it too much, but finish that. And yeah, awesome, awesome stuff um, on the Xbox. I've been playing some Ori in the Blind Forest, mm. which I mean, it's a great time. I got it took me. I kind of got stuck for a moment. I, I I was like, there's something I missed, and so I had to roam around. And I finally got the. Um, it was like the explosion burst early in the game, so I could blow oh, yeah. blow through some walls to be able to like access some other areas. So I'm like, I can't get where I need to go. So I finally got the thing that I needed, and it's been, I've been cruising since then, but really enjoying that game it's uh got a a fun little story the graphics are great the music's great um that's been what i've been playing at night when when hannah falls asleep and so there's really again there's i I could talk about a ton of games i've been playing fifa 21 on uh ea play trial i've been playing uh i forgot to mention this on the patch notes today i got one of my black friday gifts uh, or games that i bought was uh, WWE Battlegrounds. I kind of joked about it being oh, yeah. my sucker game. I played that on my on our travel down to Michigan, and it was exactly what I was hoping it would be. It's not. I wouldn't say it's like great. It's fine. It's. I have a good time, but it's basically a butt masher uh, arcade wrestling game where there's crazy antics that you can do. And I, I've I've been enjoying that. I played that on the way down um, to to Mich- or not down, but over to Michigan. Played it with my nieces and nephews and they had a fun time playing with playing that with me so that's been a good time um been playing a little astrobot been playing a little bit of call of duty again i'm like i'm probably playing eight games right now which is just i, I never do this like i'm usually like one game on switch one game on playstation that's about it but i'm all over the place right now um say, yeah because you sound like you sound like me which is weird <laughs> i there's just so much, and so I'm trying to, and I've I've got a couple other games that I'm excited to get to also, but I want to finish a couple other ones, and I'm trying to play COD multiplayer more. Like I've been enjoying that on PlayStation Five, just jumping on, pl- playing a handful of matches. Um, I haven't done multiplayer in COD really in a long time, other than like Warzone. So I'm I've been enjoying playing the just the standard team death, domination, hardpoint stuff like that. So, but. The last game that I've been playing, I didn't, I, I, I told myself, I, when I bought it, I was planning on waiting until the PlayStation 5 true upgrade. Um, but when I got it a day early yesterday, I couldn't resist. And so I've been, I've been dabbling a little bit in cyberpunk. So I, I'm probably only two hours in. Um, I don't have a ton of opinions on it at this point. Uh, I think my expectations have been tempered after reading some of the reviews, like the game, I expect the game to be good, but I don't expect it to be like earth shattering anymore. There was a while where everyone was thinking like this game is going to change everything. It seems like it's going to be a really, really, really good game potentially, but it's not going to be like redefining of any genre. So I think re- having that understanding has tempered my expectations. So I'm just kind of going into it and saying, okay, what is this game like? So 
Um, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Way too many things. Way too many. Fair enough. Fair enough, man. I, I like I said, I'm I'm right there with you. I know how it feels. Um, but in a weird sort of, I guess this is just on brand for 2020 and how everything's kind of upside down. I haven't been playing a whole lot of games. Um, you know, in my show notes here, I put Spider-Man Miles Morales, got the platinum for it and did all that. And um, I'm going to save my dis- me talking about that game for later for when we get into it. But uh, you guys will probably notice if you guys follow us on Instagram, you guys will see I'm posting pictures of just some screenshots I took from the game. Some of the things, some of this little using the photo mode and having fun with that. So if you guys want to see the games that we're playing in between recordings, head over to our Instagram and follow us over there. Uh, link will be in your show notes and you guys can keep up to date with us there with that. So I want to talk about a few games. Uh, one, those of you that listen to the show for a while, you guys know I'm, I do like Dark Souls. I do enjoy those games, even though they do get hard and I tend to quit them halfway through. But I did start Demon Souls on uh, the PS5. And so far I've beaten, uh, where did I do? I just beat the Armored Spider which uh, for someone who has arachnophobia, I felt pretty baller uh, beating that thing. I was like, yes, take that arachnophobia and all that other stuff that fills me with dread and fear. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go change uh, my pants now. Cause I was wetting myself during the fight. <laughs> and it was so terrifying, but um, I'm enjoying the game. I will say this. There, there's a few things I don't like about the game and I'll take care of those first is that, I understand that this was technically the first in the Dark Souls series. And so they didn't have things like the Estus Flask, which allows you to refill your health pretty much um, three or four times uh, throughout or in between bonfires. Uh, you had you don't have bonfires in this one. You have arch stones that drop after you defeat a boss. And so if you die, you're basically stuck running through the level. So you really have to rely on exploring, finding shortcuts. And so... I don't particularly like that aspect of it. However, it's not so annoying that I'm going to stop playing the game because on the flip side of that, I'm having a blast playing this. It is easier than Dark Souls, at least up to the point that I was I'm playing now. And it's like the game is gorgeous. It it just runs really well on PS5 and I I'm just having fun with it. I'm really enjoying it. I started playing as a soldier for those of you uh, that may be curious as to what class I picked. Um, but it's just, man, I've been talking to my boy, Jesse Knopp. You, you all know Jesse Knopp. He's been helping me out with the li- with the game a little bit. And he was just telling me, like, man, explore. Just take your time with it. Explore the areas thoroughly, and you will be rewarded for it. Because I was just kind of breezing past everything. And I went back and played it the other day and started exploring a little bit more. Got a better shield and a few other things. So, I'm excited to keep playing it. I'm hoping I'll actually finish this one because I have a terrible knack for, I mean, like I said earlier, I have a terrible knack for playing these games up to the halfway point and then quitting them. I think the only games in this genre that I've finished have been Bloodborne, Dark Souls 2, and Code Vein. A Sekiro, I got halfway, not even halfway through. I beat Lady Butterfly and then quit. And then Dark Souls 3, I got past the first boss and quit. Dark Souls Remastered, I can't remember how far I got in that. So I have a terrible knack of not finishing these games. So hopefully I'll finish this one. Uh, but yeah, really enjoying it. Really cool game. Uh, and there's that. I do have an update about destiny to be online. I don't know if anybody, uh, if do, 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 do. we got a live right. update coming from Logan for, uh, I, uh, so I put out a video on our YouTube channel, kind of expressing a little bit of a disappointment with the beyond light and, just some of the story things they were doing. And I just didn't really like the new, the new class since then I have changed my mind on this game and I'll probably do a video updating that too. But the subclass has gotten better because apparently once you beat the campaign, you're not really done with the beyond light story stuff. There's these other side missions you do that flesh out the story more and you get to learn more about the stranger and kind of what her role is and uh, kind of what she's doing in your timeline. There's kind of a little hint as to who she is and what's actually going on with her, but it's cool. You, you really get a good uh, idea of who this character is and why she's doing what she's doing. And she actually has a pretty sad story, which is, I was not expecting it to go the route that it did. So 
it really fleshes out her character very, very well in those extra side missions uh, to the point where I'm even still doing those. And as you do those side missions, you unlock more abilities for the new subclass that that's still not very good if you're a Titan, but it does make your grenades more useful. So that's been great. And I did get to actually do the new raid, which I'm going to come out and say that it's my new favorite raid. The original one was vault of glass back in destiny one. This one is insane. It is, it is one of the coolest things that I've done uh, in this game up to this date. So uh, if any of you dear listeners are playing the game and you want to do the raid, join the discord, We'll try to get a group together uh, one night and I'll take you guys through it because it's it's really something to experience. It is. Oh, my gosh. Bungie did a great job with the raid. Um, so, yeah, I'm really enjoying the game. I'm, I'm really excited to keep playing that. And that the game is just going to make it hard for me to play other games. But another game that's going to make it hard for me to play other games right now is I, too, have picked up Cyberpunk 2077. I picked it up on uh, PC. And I do have the nudity filter enabled, so it cuts out all of the nudity, which is really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of, I'm at the same point as Adam. I'm two hours in, uh, two hours and some change in. And there's things I like about it. I like the the way that the world it looks. I like how they do a good job of telling you up front, Night City is not a good place. There are horrible awful people here and i mean there's a point in the beginning where a character you come across he actually mentions like these idiots actually think this place is a is a heaven or an oasis or something he's like just wait until they find out and i'm like oh okay and yeah it's a horrible place night city is a horrible horrible place and uh, they don't try to hide it but at the same time you know they show you it's this is not a good place to be the stuff that people are doing here is not good. So they don't glorify any of it mm-hmm. uh, in that regard. And there's, there's some interesting things about this game. I, I love the questions that this game is asking so far, because as I was playing through the game and kind of exploring night city a little bit, I came across some of these ads that were on different shops and things. And it really just shows kind of the, seediness of some of these companies and how they're trying to, I mean, you see this in marketing in our current world, how that's designed to make you feel like, Oh, I need this to have a perfect life. But in this game, it's like ramped up to 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. So it's even more uh, in your face and crazy. But not only that, I was listening to a conversation in this game. I I finished a mission, went into this elevator to go up to my character's apartment. And there was this TV screen where they had this talk show going And Adam, I don't know if you came across this or not, but on the talk show, they were talking about this new technology that came out where they could put someone's soul, so to speak, on this chip and this person would have immortality. But it was interesting because they had this engineer person that was all for it. Then they had this preacher character that was against it. And they had them basically debate and kind of talk about why it's bad or why it's good. I'm like, this is this is interesting. The preacher dude is a little bit of a caricature, but. He's bringing up some good points of how this chip is just um, preying on people's misery. And it's not really that person's soul. It's just an algorithm that sounds like them. I'm like, Ooh, okay, let's get into this. And then the thing just cuts out after that. I'm like, Oh man, this is, I could have listened to that conversation for another 20 minutes, to be honest with you, just to see where it goes. So it's, it's interesting how they're bringing up these themes of um, body modification and this, world where technology has gotten so advanced that you can do these really uh, outlandish things. And they're kind of having characters come in and ask those questions like, is this really good? And so it's, it's interesting. It's, um, it's definitely intrigued me a little bit. I haven't encountered a whole lot of bugs on PC. There were some weird issues with the audio where it dropped out during some car chases. And then a character would like would walk through a closed door. Um, but nothing really game breaking on PC. I have been able to run it at ultra settings. Uh, so it's running pretty smooth. I'm getting a solid 60 frames perspective, perspective, a solid <laughs> words are hard. 60 frames per second out of it. It's just, it is what it is. So, I mean, you guys will just have to uh, keep up with me in the discord server and we'll be talking about it there. There's a group of people, there's a group of us in there playing and kind of giving our thoughts and uh, just trying to be discerning about it. And we're all just kind of aware that if the game gets a little too, 
I don't know what the word is too extreme or whatever it is. Uh, we're going to, we're going to be out, but so far it's interesting. Um, it's definitely given me a lot of like ghost in the shell, um, blade runner vibes, which is really, really cool. And so mm-hmm. we'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes from here. Uh, but I do think that just from those two hours alone in the game, there's enough there for us to do an episode based off those things that were shown and, uh, and cover those from a biblical worldview. So I think that would be a lot of fun to do. But that being said, let's switch gears here and talk about what have we been reading. So Adam, man, what have you been getting into? Yeah, well, I think I said last episode that you guys are going to have to hold me to reading a book while I was in Michigan on vacation. Um, and I kind of cheated the system and Hannah and I, I told you this in like a text, we, I'm t- hoopla early record. I've, I've talked about this multiple times. H O O P L A is basically you use your library subscription. You get access to all these books, all these audio books. And so I'm like, let's listen to auto audio book on our drive. We got a 10 hour drive. So we downloaded three audio books and we listened to two of them, one on the way and one on the way back. So on the way there, we listened to a book called The Lucky Few by uh, a lady named Heather Avis. It's a book that looks at, it's basically a memoir on this family and their kind of fostering and adoption journey. They've adopted um, three children, two with Down syndrome. And so it's just kind of looking at their story and Hannah and I are just kind of praying through adoption again and if God is leading us there and just a bunch of things with it. And so, um, and Hannah is like, first of all, my wife is a rock star when it comes to this stuff. Like she sometimes is obsessive compulsive over it. She listens to so many podcasts, reads so many articles. I'm like, you need to relax a little bit because she takes in so much information, which it's good. She, she really wants to be educated on the subject. Um, but sometimes I'm like, you just got to relax a little bit, but this was a book that she follows the author and listens to the different podcasts and stuff by her. So we, li- we listened to that book and it was really good. I mean, it's again, it's just, you're listening to how God worked in their life through adoption, uh, through the adoption of their, their children with special needs. And it's a really powerful, powerful story. So if any, if anybody's interested in adoption, especially adoption of maybe children with spe- uh, special needs, Down syndrome, uh, it would be a book worth checking out. And then the other book we listened to on the way back is a book by Jasmine Holmes called uh, Mother to Son. So Jasmine Holmes is Vadi Bakum's daughter. Are you familiar with Jasmine? Uh, a little, like not too much. I've seen her on Twitter and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, I haven't heard, I might have heard her speak once before at like a TGC or something. But I've, I've heard her husband, um, he was on a panel once when I was at, I think it was TGC. Um, but it's a book. She's basically writing letters to her son, talking about all things, being a brother, being a, uh, a son, being an African-American, talking about identity, race, a lot of different things. And it was, it was a really good book. But the biggest struggle we had with that book was the person who read the audio book, her voice, it just didn't, it didn't sound, I mean, the girl who wrote, who read the audio book for the lucky few was the author. So I think anytime that happens, that's ideal. If someone like we listened to Jackie Hill Perry's book uh, and she read her own book, I think that's always ideal. If the person who wrote it can read it, it just, there's a different level of connection. She didn't read this book. So that was kind of the most distracting thing to it. But again, you just hear some of the stories that she tells of, not a lot of different things, but even just hearing the way people talk to her and just some of the pressure of being bodies uh, of daughter. And it's really cool because just knowing the kind of big, big figure he is and kind of reformed world and kind of hearing her perspective and hearing her talking to her son, which would be Vadi's grandson, calling him like Pappy and stuff like that was really cool. But it was another book that I, again, I would, I would encourage checking out if you're interested in those conversations about identity and race. And I think she does, again, she's just talking about personal experiences and sharing some things that she's experienced and then trying to encourage her some very gospel focused, gospel centered. Um, and uh, so we listened to that on the way home from Michigan. So I got two books done. I, I just need to travel to Michigan more often and I would be knocking out more books on that 10 hour drive. But as we were saying, I don't know if it was pre-show or even uh, time just runs together. 
But I'm hoping to in the future, instead of listening to as many podcasts, I think audiobooks is a way for me to go. I just don't know if I'll sit and read like I used to um, with with where I'm at in life right now. But I think I could listen to some audiobooks more. So hopefully I'm going to be shifting my focus there because I've got so many books. So I need to read some of them. But if I can find them for free via like Hoopla, the Christian audio audiobook, I'll listen to them. But I've got so many books I need to stop buying books. If they're not free, I don't need to get them because I've got, a, a, I don't even know, hundreds that I haven't read that I've paid like a dollar for or nothing for. Um, but yeah, so look at me. Two books, man. I, I went out and went that there extra you mile. Getting it, man. You went you went far and above, man. You uh, you made a promise, but you over-delivered on it, so you surprised and delighted, as we, uh, as we would say at Apple. Um, uh, and but- I'll just mention this quickly in passing. I started, I got... Um, an early Christmas gift for my mom and I got the St. Andrew's commentary on the book of Acts from R.C. Yeah, Sproul. Buddy. So I've started that. Um, I've started doing that in my Devo and so I'm only a couple couple chapters into that or whatever you want to call it, but um, nice. not in the book of Acts, but in the commentary. And so been enjoying that. I've read three of the six or however many, seven, three of the seven. And so I, I, we talked about that on Facebook some and I've been enjoying that. Yeah, man, those are good stuff. I actually just ordered uh, the St. Andrew's commentary on Luke, actually, which is, for me, it's my favorite gospel. I love how detailed and analytical Luke is in his gospel, and so it's it's my favorite one out of the four. So I'm excited to get into that. But um, as far as what I have been reading, man, I've been reading a lot. If you guys have followed me on Twitter at all, you guys have seen how many books uh, I've read since the last recording and, and knocking them out uh, as best as I can. A lot of it's been like marketing, social media stuff, primarily for uh, to use for the podcast and try to try to get better at that. Uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you guys with that stuff. I don't think you guys would be interested in it unless you're a content creator. But if you are a content creator, chances are you're following me on Twitter already and you're already getting that stuff uh, as well. So what I've done, I'll share what I've what I've taught over the last few weeks here with my students. The last few weeks, I. I don't know what it was. I came back from Thanksgiving break and just felt this pull to preach out of 1 Timothy 4.12 that says, you know, uh, Paul is encouraging Timothy to not let anyone look down on him because of his youth, but instead set the standard for the believers. And I remember reading that verse for the first time when I was in high school. And I can't remember if it was my youth pastor or maybe it was just me telling I'm pretty sure it was my youth pastor. He's a pretty smart guy. He was telling me, you know, you should be setting the example for the adults in this church and in this community. And so, you know, you need to be living out your faith, even if you're the only one that's doing it. And I just shared that with my students. I got real just energized, man. I I don't think I've ever been that fiery when I've preached to students before in a long time. And so just really stressed to them, like you guys should be living out your faith to the to the degree that you make even me, your youth pastor, look bad. You guys should be living out your faith, praying so hard that I look at what you guys are doing and go, man, I need to step it up. Because like it's, you, I, and I told my students this, I'm like, you guys are, are stepping up. You guys are setting the standard or meeting the standard for everything else in your life when it comes to sports, academics, your parents' expectations or whatever it may be. But when it comes to the Christian life, you guys are coming so far down underneath that, that you guys are just barely meeting the the minimum standards that your parents are putting on there for you of just coming to youth on Wednesday night. Cause that's not what Christianity is. It's so much more than that. And I hope that you guys would just not be satisfied with that low bar. And so I just really encouraged them with that. And then this past week I told them, you know, Hey, I told you guys to set the bar, but Here's what you're going to face when you do that. And I went through uh, the verse in, uh, what was it? Uh, John 15, where Jesus tells his disciples, the world's going to hate you, mm-hmm. you know, but don't be discouraged. Just know that they hated me first, mm-hmm. uh, but you're, you're going to get some of that and just kind of shared with them. Like, you know, especially us as content creators here online, we, we don't, that's one of the things I'm thankful for is me and you, we don't really get it near as much as some of the other people that I've seen online, get it like, Shadeless gets a lot of heat online when he, when he's speaking truth about the Bible. Um, the folks over at GMA just had this article written about him a few weeks ago, and ever since then they've been getting a ton of trolls and people hating on him. 
Mm. So I was sharing that with my students, like when you step out of your faith or when you step out because of your faith, there's going to be people that are going to try and attack you and tear you down. But that's not an opportunity for you to quit. That's an opportunity for you to just shine even brighter. And so Mm. just try to encourage them with that. And man, it just, it's one of those things, especially if you're going to be online, you, you just got to be ready for it. And you just can't back down from it. It's one of those things where if you are getting heat because of your faith, it's no excuse to quit. It's just an excuse to get tougher and to go twice as hard uh, against that pushback and to just keep doing what God's calling you to do Yeah, Uh, because God's going to see you through it and he is going to get you through it. And I was just reading, Oh man, what was I, was it Psalm 99 or was it 93? Man, I can't remember, but it was talking about, you know, he who abides in the Lord is, you know, in his mighty shadow. And I'm just like, that's it. That's it right there. So that's kind of what I've been reading and just trying to, it's funny, you know, we as pastors, when we study stuff, we tend to not really take what we're studying to preach to other people and apply it to ourselves. But this one, I'm just kind of sitting there thinking through it, man. And I'm just like. What is God trying to tell me through through these lessons? Why is God impressing upon me to share this with students? And what does that mean for my own life? So it's been good stuff, man. It's been a really good uh, season of just kind of, I guess, going through a little bit of a, a crucible, maybe. I won't get into my personal life too much on here. I'm just saying that there's been some stuff that's come up that's really pushed me. Um, and I've had to ask hard questions of God, but it's it's a good, it's a good season. It's a good good season. So I don't know if any of that is beneficial to any of you listening, but hopefully it was, I tend to ramble. My students mm. know this best. So mm. you just have to get used to it. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the topic of the show. As always, as before we get into the topic, just a quick reminder to rate and review the show on your podcast app of your choice. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the topic of Spider-Man Miles Morales. <laughs> Now, if you're a listener that is playing the game or have has not played the game yet, um, just to let you know, we will give you plenty of warning before we get into uh, the spoiler territory. So you are free to listen up until that point. And then once we talk about spoiler, we'll give you spoiler warnings. That's your time to duck out. Um, so let's just start off with this, man. I'll give a brief synopsis of, of the story and then we'll go from there and kind of share spoiler-free thoughts on the game. So mm-hmm. with Peter out of the city for a few weeks, it's up to the newly dubbed Spider-Man Miles Morales to keep New York City safe. With Roxxon in the underground battling for control, can Miles gain control of his new abilities and bring peace back to New York before it's too late? So it's a shorter uh, game, shorter experience than the game that we got back in, what was it? Tw- was it 2019 or 2018? 2018. Wow, man, gosh, it feels like forever. 2020 is just dragging on. I think on. it was 2018 because that was the year God of War was out and they went up against That's each right. other. That was the same year. That's right. Fall of 2018. So, yeah. So it's been a while, but we're back in New York and we're playing as Miles Morales. And so, Adam, and give uh, give the dear listeners your spoiler-free thoughts on the game. Uh, what, let's start off with this. I know, because uh, I talked about this before, I played it on PS5. Did you play it on PS5 as well? I did. Played it on uh, Xbox One also. No, I'm kidding. Via wait, back, wait, via via em, the emulator, you know, you saw that where the, the Xbox could play PS2 or PS2 games better than the PlayStation Five. There's a I, I did see that, but I yeah, like, I played well, on well PlayStation. Played. Yeah, I played I played on PlayStation Five. Um, yeah, I played it on the performance mode. I would every once in a while go back and turn in the the fidelity mode just to kind of see what it looks like. I'm really sad. I'm really sad. They recently announced that they were going to do the yep. 60 frames per second in 4K, and I'm like, I'm not going to play the game again because, as as we said earlier, there's a billion games out there. So mm-hmm. I just don't see myself getting back to it, especially anytime soon. And I'm kind of, like, bummed that there's the ray tracing and everything now with the uh, performance mode. But it is what it is. The game still looked – Again, I'm not like a graphics, you know, whatever. I thought it looked great. It played amazing. Like you could tell, like, I don't know. 
I've never been one to be like, oh, frames per second. But even I can notice going from 30 frames to 60 frames, yeah, the, the no buttery, difference. buttery smoothness of the combat. Um, it didn't mean that 30 frames was bad by any means. Still really, really good. But once you've tasted 60 frames, you're like, holy cow, this is this is smooth. This is really good. So that was a ton of fun. Um, I thought the story, you know, honestly, it was just the right length for me. It didn't mm-hmm. overstay its welcome. It wasn't too long. And I'm not, that's not to say that the other Spider-Man 2018 was too long. It was, it had a lot, but like the story didn't feel rushed. There was enough side stuff that kind of got me off the, you know, not sticking directly to the, the main story. There was enough collectibles that I could go and do them without feeling like, Oh, there's so much to collect where I had to like spend hours yeah. upon hours collecting stuff. There was just a, a right amount of collectibles, just the right amount of side missions, just enough, uh, just the right a, amount of the, um, like different places, like takeovers. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know what you exactly call them, but like different bases and stuff like that. Missions that you had like side missions. Those were, they're spread out just enough. So I, Th- that part with the pacing was like just right for me. Um, I mean, you could probably give it a little bit more story, but that's not what they were going for. I think I probably put maybe 20 hours or so into it. Maybe not quite that probably like 15. Um, if I went for the platinum, I think it'd probably be like 20, but it's probably like 13 to 15 hours. The story's great. I don't have really anything negative to say. I think there's some parts of the writing of the story I'm like, I don't know if that, like, if that's really how these things would have played out. But Mm -hmm. again, for the sake of the story, I see why they did some of it. Um, But man, it's so good. It was so good. I I would agree with a lot of that. I, I don't really have any major complaints about this game. I think... In many ways, I actually like it better than the 2018 Spider-Man game. And I think it's because of just how more of a concise experience it is. It's just, um, it's not necessarily bite size. It's just more contained, I guess, you know, it's more, uh, narrow and focus, I guess would be a good way to describe it because I love the side stuff. The collectibles weren't too much. The side stuff was actually fun to do, whereas in the 2018 Spider-Man game, you had the screwball missions, which I absolutely hated those missions. And so I I like how they kind of refined that in this game. I honestly liked all the characters in the game, uh, with the Mm -hmm. exception of the uh, president of Roxxon. I didn't I just thought he was a weird character, a weird addition to have in the game. Um, He just I mean, when you have a game like the 2018 Spider-Man and you have kind of that over um overarching not overarching but like the just the main villain of doc ock and kingpin you know the great the spider-man greats it's kind of hard to really stack up against those i guess but aside from him i i liked all the other characters i i loved um miles and his interaction with his mom when they had those times and it, i actually really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun uh, for me, because I've been learning Spanish so I can communicate with my mother-in-law better and just minister to uh, some of my Hispanic students and their and their parents better here in town. Like when they would speak in Spanish, I'm like, oh, I know what they're saying. I don't need the subtitles. This is so cool. You know, so I had that, nice. that really awesome experience of like where I'm learning stuff and I got to apply it a little bit. And so it's like me every time I watch a movie and they have Russian in it and I pick up a yeah. couple words, I'm like, Pfft. And I'm and I really don't know what they're saying. I'm just hearing words that I recognize, but I feel right. like I know so much more. Yeah. So I hear you there. It just it gets you in there, man. So it's cool. And oh my gosh, you know, just the the graphics, even in performance mode, look really good, man. It it ran smooth, it played great, the controls were awesome. I I loved the the venom powers you get as Miles and using those in combat. Yes. It was yes. It was just a blast, man. I was grinning from ear to ear my entire time playing this game. Mm. And uh, I love the trophy list. I felt it was more refined as well in that regard. I didn't mind playing through the game again. 
uh, on New Game Plus because it just allowed me to just keep playing the game and taking pictures in photo mode, which I love the photo mode in this game. I mean, I loved it in the 2018 Spider-Man as well. But yeah, I I really don't have a lot of negative things to say about the game. I think it was a, a perfect game uh, for what it was. Uh, yeah, I my- think uh, I want to add to one thing that you said that I in regards to gameplay. I thought they did such a great job with like the Venom powers, like you said. Mm-hmm. When you place the other Spider-Man, by the time you get to the end of the game, you've got like eight different gadgets you can use. All the suits have different powers. It's There's so much different th- different ways that you can kind of go about this one, uh, go about the game. And Miles Morales, it's like you're learning. Like that. that's a developed Spider-Man in, in the first one. It's like you've been around for a while, if I'm remembering right. Mm-hmm. It's not like an origin story. And this one, it, it it is in some ways. It's like you're you're still figuring out things. Uh, you haven't been Spider Man for a long time, so you're limited in your gadgets. You're limited in your your abilities, and that makes a lot of sense. And I, and it makes you. It doesn't overwhelm you for the for the length of the story. Like it felt just right. I didn't feel like I was I was underskilled. You know, I probably didn't use my gadgets even enough. Eventually, I was just, you know, trying to make sure I'm dodging and comboing instead of utilizing some of the gadgets to the the way that I should. But I thought that the way that they handled that, they didn't, like, give you eight different powers because that doesn't really make sense for where he was at. But the way that they used the the Venom powers, I thought, was really, really, really well done. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for... A lot of people who probably don't know who Miles Morales is, you know, when they think of Spider-Man, they think of Peter Parker, which is understandable. Um, You know, we've all grown up with Peter Parker and Miles became Spider-Man back in Ultimate Spider-Man. I can't remember what year it was. I know I read the first several issues, though, when it came out. And so, you know, even if you missed Into the Spider-Verse, you know, you you probably still don't know that there's another, there's probably several Spider-Men, actually. But uh, I think this was a great introduction for Miles Morales as a character um, and his friends and just kind of getting used to his powers and his move sets and his own uh, rogues gallery, so to speak. And so it's, gosh, dude, it's, it's a cool game. It's definitely one of my favorites of 2020. Now I am curious about this one thing um, because as with any good Spider-Man game, you have a host, a wardrobe, so to speak, of suits to pick mm. from. And I'm going to be honest. I don't think there was a single suit in this game that I did not like. I liked yeah. pretty much all the suits. I think they all look great, but there was always one I found myself gravitating towards. And Adam, I'm curious if you had a specific suit that you gravitated towards. Uh, well, let me say this. A couple of them were a little much, a little gaudy again, cause I'm just not, I'm not, I don't know. Maybe most of these come from some comic at some point. But mm-hmm. some of the like ones where he had like, where the um, they had like scale. They almost look like scales and stuff like that. That's not the word. They're like the machine. They look like machinery almost. It's almost like your Iron Man flying around. Um, oh yeah, the but some of those. Too. Yeah, some of those ones I'm not huge on per se. But the, you know, I kept going back to a lot of just the the classics, the black and red. Like mm-hmm. the one for the game, the Spider Verse one, um, the well, I don't. There's a spoiler. There's some spoilers in even the suits. So I don't want to, but there's a there's one that you get that someone else in the game, similar to someone else in the game. Mm, that's yeah. that's a good one. Uh, and then actually, the one I think I rocked uh, that I really liked. It was like the you do the the school mission and you get like the techno. You've got like the digital digital face and stuff. Yeah. It looks like you're like uh, into um, like uh, what's the word like the the music like EDM or whatever. Yeah, uh, like a death punk character. Yes, I rocked that one for a while and really liked it. But I ended up changing because I'm like that doesn't fit the story right now. Mm-hmm. So I it kind of took me out of the immersion with that one. But that's one that I I I, I really liked. But towards the end. Um, when I knew, okay, we're getting into a lot of story towards the end of the game. I kind of just reverted to the traditional black and red mm-hmm. just cause I thought that that would make the most sense for the story. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the the 2020 suit with the LED visor is is really yeah, really yeah. cool, especially with that red neon on the different parts of the suit that highlight it really well. Yeah, it looks really cool. I want to actually go back in the game and get some photos of of that suit because it it does look really neat. I've yeah, anytime you would put on some of those suits at night, that's when they really like. Yep showed out like that neon the neon like i i was wearing that one for a while during the day and i'm like okay this is cool and then i was roaming around at night with it on and i'm like this is this looks amazing and that's when it really pun intended really shone through yeah for sure for sure um that was one i found myself wearing a lot and the other one that you get uh from a character in the game that we don't really need to mend well there's two suits that you get from two different characters that, I mean, I already showed pictures of one and people have seen it, but I won't spoil it for the, for the sake here. It's just very, um, meow, Nick, men, you, <laughs> meow. I'm trying to say magnificent well, and meow but, at the same time and I'm failing. Well, that one's okay. The one at the very end of the game, you mean? Yeah. 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 The spider cat. That one's okay. Cause that's like, that's not so much story based, but that one is cool, but I didn't get to rock it too much. Cause it's like basically, I got it in the end game. Yeah. It's, it's hilarious though. Cause you'll do the super moves and For the sure. cat will come out and like claw the person's face. And it, it's so funny. It's awesome. There were a couple of times I didn't realize that some of the, um, like the finisher moves were suit specific. Cause there was one time I did a finisher on somebody and like, like the whole arachnid, like spider busted out and like planted them in the ground. And I'm like, what? Yo, yeah. 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 I don't remember which suit it was, but it had like a different finisher compared to just your basic suits. I'm going to have to go check that out. I didn't, I didn't know that some suits had different finishers. I think, really cool. I think it, it had to be because, and I only got it once. So it must've been on a suit that I didn't wear that long because mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, that was different. Like it, it's, it stuck out to me because it was so like baller. Yeah. That's cool. I'm going to check that out. See, I didn't get that one because the suit that I wore the most was the Spider-Man 2099 one, which has like the hoodie, the where mm. his eyes are on his helmet had like this like smoke or something coming out of him. And I'm just like, this is my suit right here. I love everything about this suit. And plus, when you take photos of it, when it's like dark out and you see the eyes are light up with the smoke coming off, I'm like, this just looks cool. Uh, my wife thinks it looks terrifying but i think it looks cool so that was uh that was my personal favorite dear listeners if you want to see what that suit looks like go on to our instagram there's a few pictures of it on there and it's just it, it's a cool suit but like i said pretty much all the suits in that game i didn't really i don't think there was a single suit in that game that i did not like i loved how they all looked and how they were all just cool looking and i don't know what it is man there's something about having a hood on the spider-man outfit that just <laughs> just really sets it off man it looks really good what was that one that you get uh, early in the game the crimson cow one was another really mm. cool looking one so i'm not as big know. on the hoodies as you are but i loved fine. it man i think i think it's because it the neon me- give me the neon stuff like that's what i'm a sucker for bright colors i think it was just giving me assassin's creed vibes and that's why i was digging it i was like yeah this is cool but anyway i was gonna ask something else and i can't remember what it was so i'm sure it'll come up uh later on in the show but yeah that being said uh awesome game really really cool game i think we would both highly recommend playing Mm -hmm. it but uh this is the point where we're going to get into the spoiler part of the episode so if you have not played the game yet or you're playing the game currently and uh you know you don't want any spoilers or anything like that this is your your chance to pause the episode and to um, go play the game or or keep listening. Maybe you don't care about spoilers. Uh, but that's what we're going to do uh, now. So you have been adequately warned. You have been given enough notice. We are going into spoiler territory here from this point on. So if the game is spoiled and you're still listening and you don't want spoilers, well, this is uh, your own fault at this point. So... Let's get into the game. Now, I gave a quick synopsis of the story earlier. I'll kind of flesh that out a little bit. Um, You know, with Rocks on um, coming into the scene, they're developing this new source of energy um, that I told, is it Newfield? 
Is that what it's called? I forget what it's called. Um, it's but they're developing form. new form. New form. That's it. Thank you. And um, so they're developing that, but through a series of events, the underground comes into play. They're trying to steal this energy source. Um, and so you, that's when you meet the tinkerer. And so you're trying to figure out who the tinkerer is, what the underground's doing, why they want this source of energy. And, uh, you know, through a series of events, you find out the tinkerer is actually uh, Miles' best friend, Finn. And so now Miles has this tension of like, well, what do I do? I can't hurt my friend, but my friend is doing some bad things, so I need to stop her. And so you uh, basically just spend the game trying to stop her from unleashing this energy source as a bomb to destroy Roxon because they uh, killed her, uh, killed her brother or Mm -hmm. really just uh, put him in a situation to where uh, he was trying to stop them from using this energy source. And he sacrificed himself to try and keep them from using it because it's a dangerous energy source. And so there's more to it than that, but that's kind of the main overarching uh, tension there of conflict. And so, Throughout all of this, you're going to see a lot of different things in the game, and we're going to touch on a few of those. And I kind of want to start with with Finn um, and and how uh, she wanted to really just kind of bring Roxon down because of uh, what happened to her brother. Her brother was working at Roxon. He developed this energy source, but was trying to tell them, "Hey, this is not safe. It's not it's not good to use. You can't use it." And they didn't listen, and so uh, you know they sneak in one night try to put a stop to it and um finn's brother winds up sacrificing himself uh to stop roxon and so uh because of that she's lost her brother now she hates roxon and as i was sitting there playing the game i kind of got this thing uh, this this was what popped into my head you know we read in scripture about how we're to not take revenge and vengeance is mine and you kind of mm-hmm. the lord says vengeance is mine and you kind of see what happens with Finn and how she really becomes a different character. And she compromises on some of the morals that she had beforehand. And she becomes, um, I would say bloodthirsty to bring down rocks on, but it's getting to a point where she almost destroys all of Harlem because yeah. of her actions. Um, so man, what, what did you think of that conflict? What do you think of that? As a Christian, you know, if we were put in Finn's situation, what do you think would be the appropriate situation? I know that's a heavy question to ask, mm-hmm. but let's go ahead and and start there. What did you think of that conflict and, and how it went about? Well, I think the natural response of a humanity and like being a human, maybe fleshly response is to want revenge. If someone is mm-hmm. taken from you, you want you want you want payment back for that. I mean, you want to get that person back. You want things to be fair, just, okay. So they took someone from me. Well, I'm going to take something from them. That is like our most natural human response. I think I'm not saying it's right, but it's the natural one. It's definitely not right. Um, so, and, and you see in the story, the level that that is taken to get that, not only am I going to, because there's already been people killed by, the underground by the, you know, what's her name? It's the, um, she's the not clinker. It's the, um, what do they call her? What's her character? Her, um, tinker, the tinker, yeah. you know, the tinker has already killed people. And so that there has been a level of revenge already, but it's like, it's a reminder of what sin does. There's never enough. If you're mm-hmm. seeking revenge, if she was to get rid of Roxanne, honestly, that's not going to fill any void. It's not going to make it feel all better. All of a sudden, um, you're just gonna you're still gonna feel more empty because that revenge was never meant to fill that void. And I think that's the blessing that we see in the gospel and in Christianity is, first of all, revenge isn't ours. Uh, to be taken because honestly, we've already been granted uh, a pardon that we didn't deserve. I mean, if anything, we as humanity killed Jesus, Jesus, we killed God's son. If anybody deserved to not give life, it's God to give life to us because we killed his, his one and only son. We have sinned against God time and time again. So if anything, we there's revenge due towards us. 
But that's the goodness of the gospel is that God says, I'm going to put that on my son and I'm going to give you blessing when you deserve death. And so because we have received that from Christ, we then have, again, it's a battle. I'm not going to act like we do this easy. You know, when someone does me wrong, it's not easy for me to just turn around and act like that's not a big deal. You know, Mm -hmm. it's going to, I have to, I've got to fight myself and it's been a work in progress. I'm going to, I'd say, you know, thankfully I don't have that natural tendency, maybe as strong as some others by God's grace. I'm not maybe as explosive in that way, like of wanting to react and be like, oh no, you did me wrong type thing. But I'm sure there have been many of times in my life and there will be times in the future when these things happen where I'm going to want to get someone back or jealousy enters the picture or whatever it is where I'm going to want to respond in revenge or anger and react out of that instead of saying, you know, this isn't, this isn't my, you know, I need to seek justice and we should seek justice. But in the end, God is going to bring, he's going to bring justice one way or the other. But, and so I want to keep those things in balance. We should be seeking earthly justice, but even if we don't see it, we can hold fast to God will eventually bring true justice at some point. And so you, you, you keep both of those things together. And so in this situation, you know, Finn could have brought a lot of this out to the light in many ways, but it wasn't justice the way that she wanted. And so that resulted in revenge and seeking things that shouldn't have been done. And, you know, eventually that justice comes out, but not the way that she wanted. She thought I'm going to blow up this, you know, this center but, and that did, and it brought a lot more destruction, if anything. It didn't bring healing. It brought more destruction. But justice ended up coming out through the revealing of what was happened through um, the prowler and everything. So mm-hmm. um, there's just, there's some thoughts there, I think, around the idea of revenge. Yeah. And, and golly, dude, this is, this is one of the things that I love so much about Spider-Man as a character. And you see Peter Parker do this. You see Miles Morales do this. You know, they're always like begging with them. You know, there is a better way to go about doing this. Um, And it's like you said, she could have easily brought all this information out to light and really just brought rocks on down, which is what's interesting about that, because that's what happens at the end of the game. This information gets out and then rocks on or at least the president of rocks on gets arrested for it. And you, you see Miles telling Finn this whole game, like there's there's a better way to do this. You don't have to do it this way. Like. I get your pain, but you you don't have to become them in the process. And man, it just I really felt for for Miles, man. I uh mm-hmm. especially with him as as a new Spider-Man. He's trying to figure all this out and he's making mistakes and and goofing and stuff like that, but oh man, it was it was very effective in this game mm-hmm. in regards to um letting you see miles in his heart and how he wanted to be there for his friend. But at the same time, he wanted to live by the Spider-Man code, so to speak, and do the right thing. And so, yeah, it's, it's interesting, man, but that's, that's one of the nice things about us as Christians. Not only do we have the Holy spirit on our side, kind of giving us comfort, but it's also there to let us know, like, you know, God is going to avenge you. You don't have to become, what you hate in order to, to take it down. You know, there's someone Mm -hmm. out there who will take it down. And in a way, if Finn would have just listened to miles or let miles, uh, help, um, more to the degree than what she did, it would have been okay. Um, or it would have been even see in that her, like he, throughout the story, he tries to talk to her, but her bitterness had taken over so much that she wasn't hearing it. Like she's like, I, I trusted you, and you, I'm not gonna listen to you again because her bitterness yeah, again. It was yeah. my way, or the like, my way is the only way that this goes, and she couldn't hear anything else. And I love what you said about Spider-Man's character, whether that's Peter Parker or Miles Morales. They're always like, Hey, we want the right thing done. We want justice, but it doesn't have to be this extreme revenge justice. They want proper justice. And I love that about Spider-Man's character because they're like, hey, we can do this and we can do this together. We can do this with the authorities. We can do this in whatever the right way is. And they never been, they never waver from that. And I think you see some of that with the relationship between Miles and his uncle. 
Um, his uncle was, would look for some of that in the wrong way. He's like, no, this isn't the, the way that we do this. And the Spider-Man way is the wholesome way. It's the right way. It's the kind way. It's uh, the proper way. It's through the right channels, which I, I think you make a good point there, which is, which is what makes Spider-Man's character really shine, really wholesome, uh, mm-hmm. whether that's in the movies or in the video games, which is really nice. Yeah. And, and, and that's what's, I think it, at the core of Spider-Man, whether it's Peter Parker or Miles Morales is that uncle Ben quote with great power comes great responsibility. And Peter instilled that and miles and miles got that. I mean, there's this dialogue later on in the game where, and because we're in spoiler territory now, you know, uh, the prowler, um, miles's uncle actually, tries to keep him from going after Finn and getting himself killed. And he's like, I'm doing this to protect you. And he's like, I'm not going to just back away from my responsibility just because I could possibly die. Like I have a job to do. And when I heard miles tell his uncle that I'm like, he's Spider-Man at this point, he's got it, you know, and Mm -hmm. you see throughout the whole game, he's like, man, I'm messing up. I shouldn't be Spider-Man. I'm not good. I'm not fit. I'm like, you've got this. Like I remember watching him and hearing him say that i'm like dude you are spider-man right now like me and genki both were telling him like you're spider-man you've got this stop beating yourself up and uh but man you you see that come through you see him really becomes a a Mm spider-man in this game and you see him just trying to help people and it just and, and oh man, I, I love how at the end of the game, he's sitting there with spider with Peter Parker and he's like, does this ever get any easier? And he's like, mm. not really. Yeah. In some ways. Yes, but not really. Yeah. And so, but that's, again, it goes back to that old, that old saying with great power comes great responsibility, you know, but um, it's cool though, to see that miles has Peter there to help him along this path. And uh, I, it's going to be really cool to see, what they do um, in the next, in the next game, because they're going to need each other because that end scene showing um, Harry Osborne's son mm-hmm. in that tank with a venom floating around him there, mm-hmm. those two are going to need each other. And so it's going to be interesting to see how they, how they take on venom, which is my favorite Spider-Man villain. I love venom. He's such a cool character. Um, before we get into that and me geeking out about <laughs> uh, my favorite Spider-Man stuff, um, I kind of wanted to switch gears here. And I don't know if I, we really have much to say on this particular topic, but this just – this game struck me in in some ways I didn't expect. Mm-hmm. You know, I know Miles – I knew Miles was um, – was Puerto Rican and ha- was half Puerto Rican and half black. So I knew they were going to bring some of that culture in there. And we're going to see that. And I didn't really expect it to hit me in the way that it did. You know, in in video games, there's this conversation that floats around from time to time about representation in games. And I'm going to be honest, I've never really understood it because I just, you know, I, I look at characters in games that I play like Horizon Zero Dawn, Tomb Raider, Metroid, some of my favorite games. And these characters don't look like me. They're in a different civilization. They're in a different culture, whatever it is. And I just, I'm like, I, I don't really, I just don't really understand the idea of seeing your culture being on display um, or seeing it in a game or a medium that is widely celebrated. But when I played this game and they, you know, you walk into the kitchen and Miles's mom is making different food and stuff and you got, they're talking in Spanish and they're, um, you know, just kind of goofing and going back and forth. It, I kind of stopped myself because I was like, this is just like what it is when I, when I go do Thanksgiving with my mother-in-law, mm. like this is, this is really cool. Like I'm, I'm kind of shocked at how much this is, this is affecting mm. me right now. Cause it, it's, it's really cool yeah. to see played out in front of you. Um, and then it, well, I think it, you, I think you're getting a lot about what a lot of people are saying. Maybe this is the first time that you've maybe understood a little bit more of what some people have even said, maybe not to yeah. the, the full degree of what, how they say it, but I think you're, you got a glimpse of that. And I think I did too. And I'll, I'll let you finish, but I, I think I'm right there with you. Yeah. But no, I just, I, I loved it, man. And just hearing about the food that they're cooking, I'm like, dude, <laughs> I have that at my mother-in-law's too. This is awesome. I like, I, mm. I love this. This is, uh, it kind of brought me on another level of like, I, I relate to miles a little bit more in the, in this yes, area. Yes. Um, 
but then uh then there's this one side quest you do and i don't know if you did it but you uh you work with Haley. she was the uh deaf girl you kind of yeah, meet her in the beginning yeah 100 percent of it brother i didn't get the platinum but i did all that you could do in the game fair enough okay i'm not gonna lie come on that okay one i didn't know miles knew sign language okay so that was news to me i i don't know much about miles but i know he does sign language their whole interaction yeah of using sign language i'm not gonna lie i teared up a little bit because i'm like this is really freaking cool to watch like mm-hmm just their interaction and she's helping Spider-Man and, um, and so you're doing that mission, you're helping her out. And then at the end, when was it the underground, some, some gang attacks, uh, the feast place they're working at. And they have this, this interaction at the end that is just so sweet. And it warmed my heart. She was like, it's cool to know. Or she was like, I know that I knew that Spider-Man always protected New York, but I didn't know, uh, you know, he cared about my home and he goes, it's my home too. And then he web slings away. I'm like, that's Spider-Man. Like, mm-hmm. He was just talking about how he doesn't feel like he does, he's Spider-Man, but here he is being Spider-Man, protecting his home, helping people out. And then you got this, this really charming character that's, that's deaf. That's helping Spider-Man. It's just, I get this whole thing for representation now a little bit more, or maybe a mm-hmm. lot more because yeah. it, it was cool to see. Uh, yeah. Miles's culture there, and and they're talking about food. They're talking in Spanish, and I'm like, I understand what you're saying. And then to to see Haley have yeah. that interaction with him, I'm like, this is what Spider Man's all about. Dude, Helping I, people. I couldn't yeah. agree. I couldn't agree with you more. I think you 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 feel it a lot, and I think this is a really interesting conversation, just on the heels of even what's going on right now today. I saw um, people were talking about on Twitter how they're not going to recast T'Challa. In yeah, Black Panther. So you think of people they 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 looked at him in a lot of similar ways of representation, black superheroes. There's not a ton of them, and so to lose one and then to be talking about Miles Morales, a uh, a mixed Hispanic African American superhero, Haley, uh, a deaf character in a video game who plays a pretty I mean not super prominent but prominent role in a game. She is there often. She probably has seven eight moments in the game interacting with with spider-man it, it it makes an impact i mean this the when when they brought i think Haley was probably uh, i don't have the representation piece as much with miles but I, and i don't even have a reason for the the sign language piece but you when you can tell when there's a special moment in a game and i think that whole every time Haley was on the screen was special because she was connecting with a ton of students or students, uh, it's a pastor in me, a ton of people who are deaf, who have maybe uh, some sort of disability, special need, whatever you want to call it. And I think she could connect. That was a connecting point with them in a really special way. And I think, I mean, even as they're walking, but I think the representation part for Miles matters too. Again, losing a potential superhero in T'Challa and not having that recast from here on, to see that we're getting more of Spider-Man, of Miles Morales Spider-Man, I think that's a really important thing. Because for maybe not for me, but I, I I can see it, you know. And again, hearing you talk about it and seeing some of that come out is really cool. Um, but I think that that again for those who it impacts, and for those who are looking for that, I think it's a really special thing. And so I think it's really cool to see how that they did that really well. Whether that's the Hispanic side with his mom. The African American side, the um, the deaf girl with I say deaf girl. I, don't, I hope that's not sensitive, but the 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 girl who's deaf, uh, Haley. Some really really awesome representation in this game. I think they did an amazing amazing mm-hmm. job with it, and so I'm right there with you. Everything you said, I thought was again the music for like hearing you talk about the music because that's a part of your story with your family. It connects, like I can see how that would connect, but it doesn't still connect with me in the way that it does with you. And I'm sure there's a couple of videos out there of people playing games, Hispanic people, African-Americans playing it, and they're getting emotional. And I think they're having that connection that you're having when you hear the music, when you hear them talking in Spanish, when you hear them talking about certain types of foods. I think that's that's cool that they can, that stuff brings emotions out 
of people. And because maybe in some ways we see that in some, some different games. Um, but maybe it's just not seen. I mean, you don't hear a ton of Spanish talking, you know, talk spoken in video games. You don't hear them talking about Spanish food. It's, you know, Puerto Rican food, whatever. Uh, and so to hear that stuff come out, I mean, I would connect it. So when I started talking about biscuits and gravy, I'd be like, yo, I love biscuits and gravy. Like that'd be a connection point for me. Um, and so I can see how that could be for others. Yeah, man. So, or, I mean, okay. let me say this. It'd be like, if someone, if there was a video game set in the Adirondacks, um, in my neck of the woods, I would connect more with that game. Cause I'd be like, yo, that's my back. That's my backyard. So mm-hmm. even as you think of like that area, that Harlem, or if it was in Fort Worth where we lived, you know, all those things, those things connect with people in different ways. And so I think it's cool when they can bring that out. Definitely, man. So it, it was really cool. You know, I was not expecting it. Cause you know, I mean, I saw, I saw it floating around online. People were talking about, it. I was like, man, I hope it's just not like cheesy pandering, but I played it. And I was like, no, this is really tastefully done. It's respectful. It, at least in my opinion, it is. And I did not expect it to to hit me the way it did, man. It's uh, really, really good. And I think with that being said, it's a good point to kind of stand out there. I see you highlighting it in, in the doc to talk about the relationships because much like Fast and the Furious, this game's all about family. Mm-hmm. It's all about, all about relationships, man. And you, and you see that throughout the game. You see how, you know, Miles talks about his uncle Aaron and how – he wants to kind of reconnect with them. He doesn't really understand why there's this uh, disconnect between his mom and his uncle and why they're not really hanging out. You see how Miles wants to connect with Finn because he hasn't seen her in a long time. But, you know, there's that tension there with her being uh, the tinkerer. And he's like trying to figure out, well, what do I do? Because I'm Spider-Man, you know, but you see this brotherhood between Miles and Genki, too. And they're just I love the dialogue between those two. Oh, my gosh. They're so funny. Um So this game really emphasizes relationships, unity, that kind of stuff um, to a degree. And so what do you think, man, uh, about that? And what do you think about those relationships that were presented in the game? Yeah, I think I think they show the complexity of of going through life. I mean, in relationships, I mean, we we've seen the need for relationships in this year, you know, in 2020, where isolation, all these things, um, how if you're not careful, people can become distance. You see some of that distance between uh, Miles and Finn, you know. I think, again, these are relatable topics. As you're watching their story unfold, we can all think of people that we used to be really close with that we are no longer close with now. And when we see them, it's kind of like that awkward of, oh, I love seeing you. I wish we were as close as we used to be but we're not anymore how do we figure that out how do we fix that can we fix it um i mean i i can relate to that there's a ton of people that you know not living quote unquote back home a lot of relationships aren't what they used to be and i miss that and there's not a lot i can do about it you know i can reach out to people and i'm thankful for social media but it's not like you know i have flat i have those flashbacks like miles morales has of you know going to the science center and seeing their stuff. Like I'm a super nostalgic guy. Like whenever I go home, you know, I just got back from Michigan and the whole time I'm there, I'm seeing things, I'm having memories. I'm remembering stuff like Hannah can't even drive through the, 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 my hometown where I went to high school without me just constantly walking down memory lane. And so I, I get those things cause life is about, and it's not just like things that I did. It's things that I did with people. And it shows the importance of relationships. It shows the complexity of relationships. You see that with Miles and his uncle, his uncle and his dad, um, Miles and Finn, how the communication breakdown, you know, that's something else. And like, you know, trying to figure out how, you know, back in the day, they would have shared a lot of where they were. You know, if this was Miles and Finn five years ago, they would have shared where they were at, but because the relationship had changed, they weren't as open and honest and communicating in ways that they used to. Um, you see, I mean, Miles and Genki, I love their relationship, how they communicate. You know, Miles and his mom, um, him, her support for him at the end of the game, like, hey, I know you got to go do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. That game is, I mean, they do a really good job of developing some of these relationships, showing like this isn't just like, they're not just like made up relationships. I mean, they are, 
but they're real life situations that people go through and that people can relate to. And I thought they did a really good job of, of developing those out in a lot of different ways. Even yeah. the one I think of Miles and his uncle, I mean, wanting to protect his nephew because, you know, he, 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 he lost a brother. He's like, I, you know, I don't remember if he says like, I lost my brother. I don't want to lose my nephew. Yeah. It shows that hurt that's there. And, uh, you know, that because his relationship with his brother was broken, he didn't get to be there to help his brother. All these things, the brokenness of relationships and how these things affect us. They do an amazing job of, of showing the complexity of, of all of them. Absolutely. And I think with Un- Uncle Aaron, uh, the Prowler, you know, he's he's been on this side of things. You know, he's been in that world a lot longer than Milo has, has. And he's like, I know what you're up against. And I no, I, like, I don't want you to go in there, you know. I know how crazy this gets and I, I want you to stay far away from this. You know, he's basically like, I want you to be a kid. Um, but man, it's, I think this, this game came out at a really good time because it really emphasized, you know, we, we do need to be there for each other. I know we got a lot of hurt and stuff like that, but we need to, we need to listen, you know, Finn mm-hmm. didn't want to listen to miles, you know? And then even when she started to something came up, she got angry again and then she just, tuned everything out and then miles is just still sitting there he's like i still love you i'm still going to come after you and he's just like i I want to help and i think with that it's just a good reminder for us that like like life stuff happens in our lives and, and and it sucks right like there hasn't been i think there may have been there might have been one saturday in the last two months that my church um has not done a funeral you know, and, and I've been there around those families as they're weeping the loss of their loved ones, but I've seen time and time again, people come alongside them, love on them and support them. And it's just a good reminder that we're all struggling with stuff and we all need to be there for each other. And even if we have a fin in our life that is blinded by anger or what, or whatever it may be, we should be pursuing them because when you stop and think about it as Christians, Christ pursues us. He did that on the cross. And then, you know, even before we become uh, regenerated and we get our faith, uh, he he is still pursuing us in, in a variety of ways. And so, you know, if God is going to pursue us to that degree, we should also do the same for others and and try to really just bring everyone together and and just help each other out, mm. you know? Yeah, uh, you make me think you're talking about the game coming at the right time. I think I just got a smile on my face, like in the different scenes, you see it at the end of the game, you see it at other parts throughout the game where, you know, Miles is just being a kid in Harlem. He's just walking down the streets. He sees Haley at one point and kind of signs some words to her and talks to her. He's given high fives to some of the people giving shout outs like, Hey, how's it going? Like, like if in your neighborhood, you know, if, as a kid, if you're just kind of going down the street, you're saying hi to the neighbor, you're, you're doing this and that, um, that it shows how much we've missed that. You know, we've, we've not had those. It's crazy. I see all the time. Uh, I'll see something in a movie or in sports or something. I'm like, man, that seems so odd to me because we haven't done any of these things over the last nine months. 10 months, however long it's been. So when you see it, you're like, oh, I miss that. And so just seeing Miles walking around, talking with people saying, hey, like I I miss that. And it shows how important those things are. Yeah. And and it was funny. I listened to a few podcasts that actually brought that up about how, you know, we've been in quarantine, we've been isolated and things like that. And man, it's just what another reminder that I think a lot of us are going to miss from playing this game is that we shouldn't take that kind of stuff for granted because we lost a lot of that this year and we're starting to gain some of it back, but we need to appreciate it a little bit more. I know for me personally, like this, this year has been very transformative uh, for me and I've learned a lot of things that I need to not take for granted and really just enjoy in life, you know? Mm -hmm. And Man, just seeing Miles at the end of the game, just kind of like dancing through the streets with his headphones on and and making moves. I'm like, I would never do that because I'm very like anxious. But after the way that this year has been, I'm like, nah, that looks fun. Miles is enjoying his life. He's hanging out with his his community. He's hanging out with 
with his friends and stuff. And like, that's, that's how I want to be. I want to be carefree like miles. You know, I want to enjoy the life that God's given me and, and live it up. If it means I'm dancing in the street and looking a little goofy, who cares, you know? And so I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of stuff. This is probably getting a little too meta. Um, but I think there's a lot of stuff we've, we've probably taken for granted to some aspects. And I think this game helps us to see like, we, we need this stuff. We need each other you know, and, uh, we shouldn't take that for granted. So I think that this game is a good reminder of that, but so we kind of start laying in the plan on this episode. I think an appropriate place to go is to, uh, um, talk about Finn's redemption, which in all honesty, I didn't really see coming. I'm not very observant when it comes to movies or games, so I don't really call the shots on a lot of things. Um, so at the end of the game, when Miles is trying to keep that bomb from going off, that energy mm-hmm. thing, um, and he absorbs it, and he's trying yeah. to like get away from everybody, I'm like, how is he going to get away? Like I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Is Miles? They're not going to kill Miles off, are they? Because that wouldn't make sense. Like I want him in the next Spider-Man game. Um, but then you see Finn take her like, um, like her material glove thing and put it on her her feet, and she picks Miles up, and she leaps into the sky and runs up. And she basically gets him away from everybody, but she sacrifices herself in the process because Miles can't contain that energy anymore. And so he goes off like a nuke. Like, so first of all, I'm not going to play these Spider-Man games if they're going to keep making me cry at the end because (laughs) my wife was there and she'll she'll tell y'all, I was weeping. I was trying to hold it in during that whole scene. I was like, this is really sad because, you know, we've seen Finn throughout this whole game. We've seen the pain that she has. We, she has that realization at the end, like, oh, crap, I almost just destroyed my home. Um, I'm going to make this right. And she she sacrifices herself, saves Miles, saves her hometown to kind of make amends for what she did. And, man, it it wrecked me, mm-hmm. you know, because I was just like, I hate that because Miles just lost a friend, you yeah. know. Miles has had, a rough, has had a rough <laughs> time. He's lost his dad. He's lost his friend. It just Spider Man's gallivanting around Europe or wherever he's at. Dang it, Peter Parker. His his mentor's out of the picture right now. Yeah. And he's just trying to do the best he can with what he's got. And it just it's rough, man. But I can't help but think that at the end of that game, it it points to Christ in some way. I know the developers didn't intend it to. But you th- you sit there and you think about it, you know that's what Christ did. He we had this this debt we couldn't pay, you know we couldn't make things right on our own, and so He sacrifices Himself for us so that we could be free from sin, we could walk in newness of life, mm-hmm. we can enjoy our life and say no to sin and its temptations. And this isn't a perfect one to one. Uh, illustration or allegory, but it's just, yeah. you can't help but see anytime that a character sacrifices themselves for someone else or for a community, you can't help but think of Christ because yeah. it's, it's very rare that a friend would die for their friend, but for someone to die for a complete stranger, that's something totally radical. And that is what Christ is. And so, man, it, it's interesting how, we as Christians, we can see these little glimmers of the gospel in, in different stories. And I think you see it um, even in here a little bit, you know, this idea of sacrifice and redemption and forgiveness. It's all It all has to be rooted in Christ because that's the only way that we can get it. And there's no other way that we can really receive all that except through mm-hmm. Christ. And so, yeah. yeah, I think, you know, talking about the game and then coming back around to that in a second, I, it took me a second because I'm as I'm watching the game, I didn't catch it at first that he had absorbed all that energy, and so I see her take off in the air. I'm like, what is she doing? And then when she's when she's like, go ahead, and he's like, what? And she's like, yeah, like go ahead. And then he explodes. I'm like, oh shoot! Like that's what had just happened. Yeah. Um, it does. I mean that that moment was super powerful. Um. And I think, again, these aren't perfect, and but it just brings these thoughts to mind in regards of thinking of the cross. Like, there were, you know, it's, you know, Christ 
you see him saying, oh, God, for God, why have you forsaken me? There's a part of where he's, you know, God had turned from Christ when he's on the cross, but there's almost that like of, of God giving, uh, giving, or well, Jesus giving of himself there on the cross. It's going to be like, you know, it's okay. This is what's got to be done. There's no other way. There's no other way. God did not want to have to kill his son for us to be saved, but there was no other way for us to find forgiveness completely except through Christ. And so in this game, again, shadow for her, she's saying there's no other way. This is the way, you know, it's almost like, it's, it's like you could see God and Jesus again, uh, having this conversation again, this is, this is not right probably, but like God and Jesus be like, there's no other way. You got to do it, God. You got to send me. And again, God knew this from the beginning of time, but it's like you can make these kind of connections of like the only way that humanity can have forgiveness for their sins is if you send me, so send me. It's worth it. They're worth it. And Finn, in some ways, saying the same, the only way that you can protect these people is by us flying into the earth air and blowing up. So you got to do it. It's worth it. The people are worth it. The city is worth it. And so it brings some of those things to mind. Again, not perfect uh, analogies, but you see shadows of these things. Like you said, anytime someone is giving of sacrifice of some sort, it does in some way mirror the ultimate sacrifice that Christ made. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, man, even, even Finn, after everything she's done, you know, it kind of makes me think of, uh, there's this scene in Captain America civil war where, uh, Bucky asks, um, Captain America, you know, am I, am I even worth being forgiven? You know, I, I, that's such a profound scene in that movie that I've never forgotten it. And it's the same thing here. You know, in Christ, yes, you you are worthy of forgiveness because Christ died for you. And all you got to do is put your faith in him and then walk in newness of life, repent of your sin, and then just, just walk in newness of life. And you can have that forgiveness, you know. And I don't know if anyone's listening to this that is, that is not a Christian, but that's the same for you. You're worthy of it. Christ died for you. And so if you have questions about that or anything, feel free to hit us up and We'll be happy to answer those questions. So I think that's a good, a uh, good spot to land the plane on this mm-hmm. discussion. There's a, like I said, there's a lot of other things that we could get to. There's a couple things in our notes here that we didn't get to just yet, but you know, uh, dear listeners, you guys can continue the conversation on social media and our discord server and the Facebook group, all those places. And if you're playing Spider-Man, Miles Morales, uh, send us some of your favorite screenshots, send us your favorite, let us know what your favorite suit was, favorite part and all that stuff. Um, and if you, uh, I don't know, I'm curious, here's one thing I'm curious to know if anybody played this game and then heard, Oh, into the spider verse as miles, I'm going to go watch that. I'm curious if anybody went and watched that movie, um, after, after playing this game, which is a great movie, by the way, if you guys haven't checked it out, definitely go check it out. But with that being said, dear listeners, that brings our, our spoiler cast on Spider-Man miles Morales to a close, go play the game, enjoy it. If you have not done so already, But since this is our only episode of this month, we're going to do our patron thank yous right now. Thank you. I think you love me. You really love me. And so uh, kind of what we do, we usually do this every second episode of the month. But again, because we're only doing one this month because of uh, the holidays. Uh, We're going to go ahead and do it here. And these are just the folks that continue to support us over on patreon.com and uh, help support us and uh, allow us to do what we do on this show. And those people are Alex Castellanos, Andre Swan, Ashley Cronenbitter, Caleb Schmidt, Christopher Commander, Colin Gregory, Daryl Tavares, David B., Derek Smith, Isaac Stoltz, Jake Walker, James Barker, Jeffrey Jackson, Joanne Monroe, Josh Broccolo, Caleb, Kokoro Daki, Mark Fromey, Matt Edwards, Matthew White Chocolate McDougal, Matt Millsap, Melvin Benson V, Micah Hendrick, Michael Toller, Nate McKeever, Retro Rewind Podcast, Sam White, The Third Strongest Mole, <laughs> Weatherman Keith, Wesley Ray, and Javier Medina. Hey, there's a couple of new ones on there I've never read before, so that's awesome. Thanks. There are a few new ones, New man. backers. There are a few new ones. We got some new ones that came in uh, for uh, the Black Friday sale that we had on our on our shop and all that stuff. And they're like, Hey, nice. I want to do Patreon too. So I was like, Hey, get after it. So there it is. But guys, thank you so much for your continued support over on Patreon. We greatly appreciate that. Um, 
And before we let you go, some recos. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. Adam, what are some things that the dear listeners should check out uh, after listening to this episode? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've given a bunch <laughs> of different ones already, but I keep coming around to Hoopla, H O P L A. Check that out if you're looking for some Christian audiobooks. It's really weird. Like, they they don't have they have they don't have every audiobook, but they have a ton of Christian audiobooks. So if you're looking to get into that, um, I talked about some of the other books and different things, but that's probably the one that I, I've been on hitting on the most recently. Right on, man. Right on. I'll check that out myself because I feel like I've heard of that, but I haven't actually Save checked it out. Save yourself some money, y'all. I was kind of mad about it because I, you know, we listened to that, the Lucky Few book, but I literally just bought it like three days before. For <laughs> nine, I got it for like 99 cents because I had some digital credit saved up mm-hmm. through Amazon Prime. So it's not like I paid a lot for it because I was planning on reading and I'm like, oh, well, let me see if they got the audiobook. I'm like, son of a gun. But <laughs> I'm glad I could support them because it was good. There you go, man. There you go. Mine is going to kind of go alongside with that. You know, maybe you're not an, an audio uh, book li- listener, but you would rather uh, read or something like that. Or even maybe you're a person who doesn't like to read. I would still encourage you to find a book that interests you and read. I was having this conversation with a couple people in my church, some former educators here, and we we're just talking about books, what we were, what we're reading, some of our favorite books. And we got on the conversation about, you know, I've talked with some of my students a, a couple of times and they just hate reading. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't hate reading. You just haven't found the right book yet. And I told them, you know, uh, in grade school through middle school, I, I read a lot, but then I stopped and it wasn't until high school. Um, you know, I never really liked the books that we were assigned to read because I just thought they were boring. I'm like, I didn't really want to read any of this stuff. But I remember reading Fahrenheit 451 uh, in my English class. I was like, this book is insane. This book is wild. I really like this book and it's actually one of my favorite books um, of all time. So if you need a book to try and pique your interest in reading Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, or you could get into something else like Harry Potter is a good one to start with. Um, there's several books that you can use to start, but definitely get into a book, get into some reading and, and uh, you know, don't, don't wall yourself off from that form of entertainment, but also learning. You can learn a lot from books as well. The other thing I'll reco, and this kind of goes alongside the uh, with this game, if you haven't watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, mm-hmm. go check it out. Really good movie. If you want more um, just Spider-Man in general or you want to learn more about Miles Morales, definitely check, the, sure. check that movie out. Really, really good movie. Really, really good movie. Uh, highly recommend it. But anyway, dear listeners, that has been episode 181 of the Reform Gamers. As always, if you want to support what we do here, uh, there's a few ways that you can do that. You can buy merch from our merch store. Show Their link is in your show notes. You can go to our Patreon and support us there. Um, you can also leave a rating and review of the podcast on your podcast app of choice, whether it's iTunes, Downcast, whatever you use. All those methods help us out in a, in a huge way. And you can also interact with us. Uh, You can interact with me on Twitch every Friday morning, uh, twitch.tv slash the theologan. You can get extra content over on the website, thereformgamers.com or youtube.com slash thereformgamers. And then you can uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, You can follow us on Facebook. You can join the Facebook group and interact with other dear listeners there. Or if you don't really like Facebook and you prefer Discord, you can go over to Discord and do the same thing there. And you can also follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash the reform gamers. Like I said, that's a great way for you guys to kind of see what we're playing in between recordings and uh, talk about games and things like that there. So definitely check us out on those avenues. But with that being said, dear listeners, like I said uh, a couple times already, this is the only episode that we're going to do this month because of the holidays. We're going to be busy with other things. But stay tuned to YouTube and some other uh, and the website. You'll get extra content there. But in case you missed it in the beginning, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and mm-hmm. we will see you all in 2021. Be a deer. Keep it locked, dear. We'll see you next year.
Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Reformed Gamers, the podcast all about theology and gaming. TRG is edited by Deer Ear Productions, so thank them for the buttery smooth tones in your ear. If you're looking for extra content, head on over to youtube.com slash the reformed gamers. The reformed gamers is entirely fan supported over on patreon.com slash the reformed gamers by our dear patrons. The following deer are at the producer level or higher and will forever be thanked at the end of each show. As long as their pledge comes through or we forget to update the audio. Those people are David Matthews, Colin Gregory, and Wesley Ray. Thank you for your support on Patreon.com, keeping our controllers charged, and supporting Logan in his never-ending quest to collect them all. Platinum trophies, that is. So be a deer, and keep it locked here. Keep listening. We'll catch you later.